Well, first of all, uh, we study ice cores that are drilled from glaciers. And uh, glaciers serve both as recorders of the past climate as well as indicators in that they advance when it gets cold and they retreat when it gets warm. So the ice cores themselves are amazing in that they record not just climate, but also, uh, uh, and climate being things like temperature through the stable isotopes or precipitation by annual air thicknesses. Uh, they also record the forcings of climate, things that have caused climate to change in the past, such as major volcanic eruptions, leave tephra and sulfate layers. There's a history of the output of the sun and cosmogenic nuclides that are preserved in the ice. And there are really our only uh, recorder of the Earth's comp atmospheric composition. In the bubbles in the ice, we have a history of carbon dioxide, uh, methane, nitrous oxide, all the things we're concerned about for the next uh, uh, 100 years. And we have records that go back over 800,000 years to give us perspective of the changes that are taking place. Our, our research, uh, I think the, our biggest accomplishment was to move paleoclimatology ice core research out of the polar regions to the high mountain regions of the world. In the Andes, we recovered the very first records of the Little Ice Age. Uh, this was a period when glaciers advanced in Europe and North America, uh, and it was also a very cool period in, in the tropical Andes of Peru. Uh, we've been able to extend that record now back into the last ice age, uh, when we had the big ice sheets on the planet. And we know that the climate in the, in the tropics uh, underwent significant cooling, uh, five to six degrees C. And the isotopic shifts that we see on mountaintops uh, like Huascaran are the same as we find in Greenland and Antarctica. So they, these records have shown us how sensitive our climate system is to change. And uh, this, uh, this gives us a warning for the future. Okay, well, one of the beauties of drilling ice cores from outside of the polar regions is that they come from regions where civilization, as we know it, developed. And uh, civilization, uh, cities, all of that are, uh, have developed in the last 10,000 years. So by getting ice core records from these regions, we can actually look at the relationship between the rise and fall of these cultures and climate. Uh, for example, in the Andes, uh, if we go back before the Spanish arrived in 1531, we have the Inca Empire, and before that we had the Tiwanaku, the Wari cultures, and in each of those cases we find that they, they came to an abrupt end following a decadal long droughts. So very clearly they show us that in the past these civilizations were very much uh, linked to uh, climate and climate change. So when we look into the future, we'd like to think that in today's world, because we're all globally connected, that somehow uh, we would uh, share the same fate as these earlier civilizations. Unfortunately, with global climate change, it is global, and all areas will be impacted, and we all still basically depend on food and livestock for our existence uh, on this planet, and all those are at risk when we talk about climate change. I, I think that probably the most uh, significant thing is the rate at which these glaciers are retreating. Uh, when I first started this research back in the 1970s, climate change or global warming were not an issue. But we were actually monitoring mapping these glaciers and how they were changing through time. And once we noticed that they were not only retreating, but they were accelerating, we became concerned. And in 1991, for the first time, we observed melting at the very highest elevations on the Calcaya ice cap in the Andes of Peru. This led to, in 1992, my first testimony before the U.S. Senate, along with a number of other paleoclimatologists, 
about the significant changes that we were observing in these remote parts of our planet. So they, they are very, very uh, 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 significant indicators of climate change. And I would say one of the, one of the things that uh, uh, makes them important when we're talking to politicians is that glaciers have no political agenda. They're just summing up what's going on in their environment and they're retreating. And in today's world, that retreat is accelerating. And uh, we're really concerned about what that's going to do for local resources, for people, drinking water, irrigation, uh, municipal water supplies, hydroelectricity, but also uh, uh, how that's going to impact uh, uh, global sea level. Uh, glaciers are just water on land. When they melt, uh, they go through the rivers into the oceans and sea level is rising. And in today's world, it's not only the mountain glaciers, but it's Greenland, it's Antarctica, uh, that are all responding in a very similar way. And uh, these are, glaciers are kind of like our, uh, our early warning system on this planet. Uh, and they're telling us that temperatures are rising, glaciers are melting, and sea level will continue to rise. This is an important question, and, and it's truly, it's a, it's a global question, because uh, climate change has to be addressed by uh, all countries and all people. But I, I would say that uh, uh, probably it was about a decade ago, my daughter came to me and she said, Dad, one more ice core, you're not going to change the trajectory that we're on. You've got to reach millions of people. And so this year, I have tried to I gave a TED talk uh, on uh, climate change, uh, and we've just finished the documentary, uh, Canary, which should be released this year, uh, that documents uh, the changes that we have observed in these remote parts of the world. Uh, will it make a difference? Uh, that depends on how many people we can reach. Uh, and ultimately, uh, when it comes down to politics, uh, we, we have to have politicians who have the best interests of people uh, in mind. Unfortunately, there's a lot, a lot of economic interests uh, that are tied up in our political systems around the world. It's not unique to the U.S., it's everywhere. And somehow, uh, it, it's important to get the message across that climate change will impact all of us. It will impact the economies in a very negative way. And sea level rise is going to displace a lot of people. And we do not do well with immigration in today's world. And how we're going to handle uh, millions of people. And what's very clear to me is that we have to build bridges uh, between countries. Uh, uh, you don't have to believe what uh, another nation believes uh, to work together to solve a common problem. And I would say our expeditions to these remote parts of the world are an example of that. In 2015, we had an expedition to the western Kulun's in far western China. We had over 60 people on that expedition. They came from Russia, they came from China, they came from the US, they came from the South America, they came from the Tibetans working in the field. And even in those harsh conditions, we were able to uh, join forces, accomplish the mission, and in many ways, that's exactly what's going to happen have to happen if we're going to deal effectively with climate change.